Hi, my name is Ann Dettelbeck and I'm with the Washington State Department of Ecology. The purpose of this video is to explain sampling techniques required by the Washington State Construction Stormwater Permit for Construction Sites. This video will help you collect and analyze samples to provide the most accurate results possible. Some effort is required to prepare for stormwater sampling in order to produce meaningful results and to meet permit requirements. This video will take you through that process step by step. Construction sites are required to sample the following parameters, either turbidity or transparency, and pH. The Department of Ecology requires sampling these parameters because they are good measures of water quality and because construction sites can alter these water quality parameters. Turbidity is a measure of water clarity. Higher turbidity means the water is less clear and more materials are suspended in the water. In the state of Washington, turbidity is the primary test used to look at construction stormwater discharge. Turbidity is the measure of light scattered due to the presence of particles in the water. It is documented in Nephilometric Turbidity Units, or NTUs. The muddier the water, the higher the levels of turbidity will be. Turbidity often increases sharply during a rainfall, especially in developing watersheds which typically have relatively high proportions of construction with open areas of soil. Suspended materials such as soil particles and other materials in water can clog fish gills, reduce resistance to disease in fish, lower growth rates, and affect egg and larval development. As the particles settle, they can blanket the stream bottom, especially in slower waters, and smother fish eggs and aquatic insects. Reduced water clarity can also increase water temperature, lower oxygen in the water, and block light to aquatic plants. Soil erosion is the most common source of turbidity from construction sites. Soil particles can enter streams and rivers from construction sites in three ways. First, rain can fall on a construction site and wash away dirt to local streams and rivers. Second, vehicles or construction workers can track sediments onto local roadways where the sediment is then rained upon and washed into local streams directly or from stormwater drains. Third, wind erosion can carry exposed sediments into the air, which is then transported from rain into local waterways. Construction sites that need to retain sediment usually have a stormwater retention pond or other devices to prevent sediment from entering local streams. pH is a term used to indicate the alkalinity or acidity of a substance as ranked on a logarithmic scale from 1.0 to 14.0. Acidity increases as the pH gets lower. High pH is considered alkaline or basic. The term logarithmic means the difference between two whole values is tenfold. For example, a pH of 5 would be 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6, and a pH of 4 would be 100 times more acidic than a pH of 6. pH affects many chemical and biological processes in the water. Most freshwater aquatic animals prefer a pH in the range of 6.5 to 8.0. Outside this range reduces the diversity in the stream because it stresses the physiological systems of most of the organisms and can reduce their reproduction. Low pH can also allow toxic elements and compounds to be mobilized and taken in by aquatic plants and animals. Low or high pH can be toxic to aquatic life, particularly to sensitive species such as salmon. For example, a pH over 10 can kill a salmon in minutes. Construction sites can alter pH in two ways. One way is during concrete pouring and curing. The second way is soil stabilization methods that use amendments such as Portland cement treated base, cement kiln dust, or fly ash. If it rains before these substances are cured completely, the water can dissolve chemicals and wash off into the streams. The chemical properties of these substances can change the pH of a stream from a normal range to a high pH, or basic range.
keep all of your sampling gear together in a field kit so that it is ready to go when you need to sample. You will need the following tools to conduct construction stormwater sampling. Clean collection or sample bottles. Distilled water for rinsing collection bottles. Non-powdered nitrile or latex gloves. A site log book to record your measurements. A turbidity tube or turbidimeter. A velvet cloth to clean your glass sample vials. And silicone oil. pH strips or a pH meter. If you plan to have a lab analyze your samples, be sure to have clean sample jars from the lab. Be sure to have enough to cover all of your sampling locations. Also, make sure you have ice and a cooler to store your samples in so that you can get them to the lab in time. In this segment, we will calibrate the Hawk 2100P turbidimeter. Turn the meter on and press calibration. The display will prompt you for the zero NTU sample. You will want to oil the sample vial to remove optical variants such as scratches, fingerprints, and condensation. To do this, place a small amount of oil on the sample vial bottle and slowly rub the oil in with your fingers. Make sure that it is thoroughly coated. Use a velvet pad to remove any excess oil from the bottle. Open the cover of the turbidimeter and align the sample vial with the diamond up in front of the machine. Close the cover. Press the calibration button and then the read button. Allow 60 seconds for the meter to calibrate. The LCD will display the time in seconds. Once calibration of the zero NTU sample is completed, the LCD will prompt you for the 20 NTU sample. Oil the 20 NTU sample vial as before. Remove any excess oil. Open the cover and remove the zero NTU sample. Next, place the 20 NTU sample in the meter chamber. Close the cover, press the calibration button, and then press the read button. Allow 60 seconds for the meter to calibrate as before. Repeat the same procedure for the 100 NTU and 800 NTU samples. If there is any discrepancy of accuracy in the calibration process, contact the manufacturer directly. In this part of the video, we will review steps to calibrate the PH2 tester. Prior to the calibration, you will want to rest your pH meter in tap water for 30 minutes. 
Turn the pH meter to on. Place the pH probe into a pH buffer solution. Press the calibration button. Allow the probe to remain in the solution for 30 seconds or more. Once the 30 seconds have passed, press the Hold Con button. Remove the probe from the buffer and rinse the electrode thoroughly with distilled water to wash off any remaining pH buffer solution. This process avoids contamination. Repeat the process. Next, place the probe in the next buffer solution. In our case, this buffer solution has a pH value of 7. Press the calibration button. Allow the probe to remain in the solution for 30 seconds or more. Once 30 seconds have passed, press the Hold Con button. Remove the probe and rinse thoroughly with distilled water. Repeat the process for any additional buffer solutions. When the calibration process is completed, rinse the cap or place a damp sponge in the cap to ensure the electrode does not dry out. Turbidity or transparency sampling should occur weekly at sites 20 acres or larger as long as the site is discharging stormwater. For transparency or turbidity, samples should be taken at all locations where stormwater is discharged from the construction site. Examples include ditches carrying stormwater off-site and pipe or pound outfalls. These sites should be marked with a flag and marked on the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan site map. Certain sites discharging to impaired waters may be required to test for other potential pollutants. When sampling, hold the bottle with the opening pointing into the discharge so water flows directly into the mouth of the bottle. This way, water is collected without first washing over the outside of the bottle or your hands. This reduces the potential for contamination. When conducting turbidity analyses using a transparency tube, follow these procedures. Quickly pour the sample into the tube. Pour less water if the sample is cloudy, and more if the water is relatively clean looking. While holding the tube vertically, look into the top of the tube at the black and white disc at the bottom. Can you see it? If not, loosen the valve and release small bits of sample at a time until you can just barely distinguish the contrasting pattern at the bottom of the tube. Close the valve and record the depth of the sample in the tube by referring to the metric scale on the side of the tube. If you can see the disc after first pouring, reshake your sample and pour again. When conducting turbidity analyses using a field meter, follow these procedures. Hold up the sample vial to ensure that it is free of scratches and materials. Shake your sample container vigorously and pour it quickly into the vial. Be sure to hold the vial only at the very top to keep it clean. Silicon oil comes with this particular model of turbidimeter and can be used on the outside of the vial to eliminate microscopic scratches. Wipe gently with a velvet cloth which won't leave any lint.
set up the meter on a level surface and turn it on. Line up the sample vial for the turbidimeter. The diamond on the vial lines up with the front. Close and press read. Be careful not to bump or move the turbidimeter while it is taking its reading. Record the value. Take another reading by remixing the remaining collection sample and filling the vial as before. Average the two results and record these values in your notebook. When conducting a pH analysis using a field meter, samples should be taken from a stormwater pond or an impounded body of water. The field meter should be calibrated prior to sampling, as is discussed elsewhere in this video. Place your sample on the flat ground. Remove the bottom cover from the field meter to reveal the electrode. Press the on button. The LCD display will indicate that the probe is on. Place the probe one half inch into the water vessel. Stir once to let the indicated value stabilize. Once stabilized, you may read the value on the display or press the Hold Con button. Pressing the Hold Con button will allow you to read the value once the probe is removed from the water sample. Press the Hold Con button again to clear the value. Once the value has been recorded, press Off. Follow these procedures to conduct a pH analysis using wide range pH paper. Open the container of wide range pH paper slips and remove one, being careful only to touch the plain colored top end. Do not touch the part with the colored squares. Per the manufacturer's instructions, hold the strip in the middle of the sample for several seconds. Do not let the strip touch the side of the jar or fall on the ground. Remove the strip from the sample and compare the color pattern to the examples on the carton to locate the closest match. Document these results in your field notebook. Now you know how to take grab samples in accordance with the construction stormwater general permit. The permit requires monitoring to begin on October 1, 2006. Ecology has other resources available to assist in implementing the Construction Stormwater General Permit. This includes a DVD and sampling guide, a guide to the Construction Stormwater Permit requirements, a copy of the construction permit, applications, and other information. Thank you for your time today and please get in touch with the nearest regional ecology office if you have any additional questions.